Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Behind the Brew podcast. I am DJ Keo. And I am Basil Barrington, and we are back with another film review. So we are talking about Carter, a Netflix original. Mm. IMDb gave it a 5.1. What do you think about that? <laughs> I mean, that's fair. <laughs> I'm not mad at that. Here's the thing. If they well, we'll, we'll talk about the, the storyline in a second, but like it could have been better. And I think that they were just like they were OD on co- cocaine or something. Something dude. they were they were they were high as hell when they made this movie. And there's so much stuff that I liked, and there's a lot of things I didn't like, and it, it bothered me because like it's just so much potential for us. This yeah. is like the concept was cool. The way they shot it was interesting, but it was it was excess. It That's was, why I said was, the cocaine thing. Because yeah. it was it was excess. It was too much. Shot in Korea, obviously, South Korea. Um, this mm-hmm. is a South Korean movie. Um, you know, I thought that, man, it was like just so much going on. It's like with the camera action, you know, and the the mm-hmm. drone footage and you know, the shaky, jittery camera it's and TGI. Everything. Yeah. And just like, oh my goodness, this it's like I said, the sensory overload. It was like almost like it was just too much, right? And then mm-hmm. this it also felt like you had multiple stories here, even multiple movies, right? I mean, is it um, yeah, you know, it could have been right. Yeah, you're right. It could have been just, just it could have been like four movies all wrapped yeah, up in one. Exactly. And, because and because of that, been, the story mm-hmm. suffered. Because right. it's too much. Right, because they converge. And, and see, this is like a classic tale of like someone getting some loot and, you know, hey, you know, you're going to put a film together. Mm-hmm. And just going overboard with everything, the CGI. Yeah. I mean, it was just like, I don't the know. The producer man. for this movie said yes to everything. Everything. <laughs> They're man. like, we're going to fight on a helicopter. Yes. I know Another helicopter? Yes. I want to know. On a trade? Yes. <laughs> what do you think this budget was, really? I don't know, cause like you know, movies over there they don't cost the same for Hollywood type stuff. Right. And mm-hmm. They have they have CGI studios and and stuff like that over there too, so it probably wasn't as expensive as it would have been if it was in Hollywood. But yeah, uh, like they threw they threw the kitchen sink and then another kitchen sink at this movie. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> it was too much, dude. And then the it's other thing much. was um, how they went from you know regular digital camera to mm-hmm. like. CGI scenes, you know, like the animation. You saw a little animation in this movie, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like the fire when he, when he when he jumped off of something, you know, and it was that was all animation until he uh came mm-hmm. into focus on the camera. I was like, okay, so they're mixing it up here. That's kind of cool. You can't. And the other thing is this: I've seen a lot of like um, Asian, specifically South Korean and Japan. Um, mm-hmm. movies like this. This is sort of a movie you've seen before, right? Minus yeah. the zombies, you know, because I don't know if this guy was like a spy or if whatever. It, it, you know? None of this is clear, right? Yeah, I don't know what <laughs> he, it was. He left, he left South Korea. He went to North Korea. He got he married. He had a kid. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, I have, I have lots of questions about lots that decision, questions. bro. You want to <laughs> uh... give, give a brief overview, then we can get into it because this was a weird one. <laughs> so basically a guy wakes up in a hotel room and there's blood everywhere. And he's got like an earpiece, like this bedded in his ear. And he's got like these stitches in the back of his head. And then the CIA kicks down the door and then hijinks ensue for the next two hours. Yeah. Uh, he's fighting North Korea. He's fighting South Korea. He's fighting the the army. He's CIA, fighting the everything. CIA. Mm-hmm. He's fighting everybody. And they're they're like, you know, it tried to be like a spy thriller mixed with like Twenty Eight Days Later, mixed with Train to Brisson, <laughs> Train to mix the mixed like, with was, Black like, Crab because you know the yeah, was, he it, wanted his daughter back. You know, yeah, he did get his daughter back. Like, yeah. it, was, it was a billion different things, and I think so that much. the movie. Because, like, as far as technical aspects of it, it was shot well. You know, I didn't mind the acting. I thought acting was good. I liked the lead character. That that his acting was great. Mm-hmm. His fighting skills are phenomenal. Yeah. I liked all that stuff. There's so much things I liked, but too much. Yeah. <laughs> and you, was... you just you tone it down. You need a producer to be like, do we really need this? And yeah. you're like, you know what? You're right. You know what? You're right. Like, we'll take yeah. it out. Like, that's what you needed. You need somebody to just tone it down a little bit. Like, it, when you make a movie like this and Michael Bay is like, come on, bro. Like, this is too much. This is like, too this, much. You, you've got a problem. <laughs> you, you know, the, um, 
you know, there was no cohesion with the story, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it was almost like, you know, four people said, hey, I have a story. Hey, I have a story. Let's put it together and make a movie. And now you have like it a two was... hour and 10 minute movie, which was completely, absolutely, ridiculously long. <laughs> See, here's the thing, right? I can't, I can't tell movie. you the plot because the plot is so convoluted. I don't know. He's, he's a CIA agent who defected to North Korea, who has a kid that got a zombie virus because the... The North Korean general trade uh he sold them out. And so he had to go kidnap this other scientist's daughter and bring her back to North Korea so the scientist could fix the thing, but he got double crossed and then he gotta stop a train because it's going to China. Like it was too much. Too much. It should be simple. My daughter's kidnapped. I'm gonna get her back. Bad general. Done. Movie it's done. Good. Movie would have been phenomenal if that, that was the case. Yeah, and and presumably they they're gonna have like a sequel to this too. So they're gonna make a sequel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, mean, I look, like the character, but like, look come how on, it man. ended, dude. They need they have to have a sequel, right? They and know that. Once that bridge blew up, I was like, "What is done? What's happening right done. now?" No, it can't be done, right? Um, <laughs> you know, the the other thing is this, right? Mm -hmm. The first fighting scene, right? Where he was like in a thong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, he was, was in a thong. thong song. And he basically, thong he was in a bathhouse <laughs> and he basically killed probably 100, 200 people at with a Minimum knives, 200 people. With a knife. <laughs> you stab it every boy in the gut 200 times. <laughs> so this is what I don't understand, right? Um, mm -hmm. In some of these movies, when you have one person fighting like, let's just say five people. Oh, yeah. I don't get it. I don't get how like, you know, it's like one person taking out a hundred people and he has a knife mm. and he's fighting these people in a thong, you know? Yeah. It's just like, it, this really? is saying, get, the producers should have been like, nah, I don't think we need this scene. We That's just cut it out. He, yeah. he jumps through after the bomb goes off, he jumps through the window, gets out of the bathhouse and runs down the hall and gets a coat and whatever from the store. Yeah. Go. Like, you probably could have, like, trimmed down the naked girls shooting guns and stuff. Like, just kind of trimmed all that down. Yeah. It probably would have been okay. But, like, it, it, it's, a, it's a problem of excess. It was too much. And it, this is coming from somebody who, who's seen the Hardcore Henry, uh, Trader Prasad. Like, I've seen a mm -hmm. lot of movies that was, like, insane. Mm -hmm. Like, just absolute carnage going on. And I looked at this movie, and I was like, damn. <laughs> this much. is too much. It's overload, <laughs> and I like this stuff. That's the crazy part. I like these kind of things, yeah. and I was like, "This is this is too much." I, I think um, this movie would have been acceptable in its present form, right, with all mm -hmm. the CGI and the camera action and everything else. If it were mm -hmm. an hour and thirty minutes long, you would have been fine. <laughs> the time would you would have been, been fine, right? You know, I, no, I think like though you also need to explain why he could do these extra human abilities, like. Jumping off of an exploding bike onto a, an exploding train in yeah. between two cars. Like, how did you do that? <laughs> do you have abilities? Do you got robot <laughs> legs? Like, how did you do this? Man, he must be a super spy, <laughs> a super soldier. I he's, mean, a, he's an android. I don't uh, 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 You got to explain why he can do these things. You yeah, have to really, explain. It, there are a lot of things that they need to let, let us know, you know, because, I mean, there are a lot of unexplainable things. Let me ask you this here. Yeah, How many people yeah, do you think Carter killed throughout the whole movie? Like, just <laughs> off the top of your head. We know he killed 100 or 400? In That's a bathhouse? Like, maybe in a, 500? In I don't know. Because he man, killed it, the zombies, too. He was, he was mowing down zombies, too. Yeah, that's Plus what I'm saying. all the army guys in North Korea. It's a lot of people. I don't know it, what the death count is. It has to be. I mean, we're, we're exaggerating here, but, like, it was a lot of people. He killed a lot of people. He And he was equally killing people with a gun and also a knife, you know? So it's just yeah, like, okay, was, this guy's handling knife, Mowing down people. Too. You know? I yeah, mean, he's like he Neo in the Matrix, the way he was fighting these people. It's like, okay. I would like to see like more human aspect of it, like rather than just insane video, because it reminded me of video game. Yeah, you you know what? I'm glad you said that, because like I guess 15 minutes, like after the bathhouse scene, this joint mm -hmm. felt so much like a video game, so it, much like, like a video game. They had the overhead behind his head the view shot. It, it looked like a game. It looked exactly like a video game. It had that the uh, the feeling, the way the cameras were moving around and all that stuff like that. That's yeah. why I was like, ah, just I would have liked it better if he shot it more cinematic rather than just like you throwing every camera at it. Like 
is a million cameras. It's a million CGI. It's, just, it's a billion things was going on, on the screen. Yeah, it, it was like I said, a sensory overload. It was just it was um it was too mm-hmm. much. You know, it was it made the movie. I don't. It took something away from the movie because once yes. the movie started, he started fighting until the movie was over. Yeah, yeah he fought the entire movie. <laughs> You're he not tired. No. You didn't get stabbed. You didn't get shot. Nothing. Nothing happened Nothing. to you. You know, some cuts here, bruise there. You he, know, he got cuts because he jumped through a window and he, right. he mm-hmm. he's had what three bombs blow up in his face because he and had the bomb in the airplane, mm-hmm. the bomb with the was it the bomb with the, the in the hotel room, and then and there the was bomb, another bomb. Uh, there was a bomb on the um the last car of the train. Where yeah, the, the last was, car of the train. You know? Yeah, yeah. So you had three bombs blow up. You should be deaf. You should be like, you know, hat burnt up, like something. <laughs> something had to happen to you. Like he ears was ringing or something. He, right? he was just like, and hey, I'm good. All right, let's go. We're fighting yeah. to do. You're not tired. That's what I'm saying. Like it, uh, the movie Hardcore Henry, I think there was like a, a closer connecting to this than anything else. Because that was like, they shot that like a video game, like a first person perspective. And people were throwing up watching it. <laughs> It was like it was it's a it, camera angles, everything like it felt so insane that like people in the movie theaters were throwing up in the seats. Wow. Like, they couldn't they couldn't handle it. And it's the same type of thing of it just ridiculous action nonstop for two hours. And when I say ridiculous, like it's on par. Hardcore Henry's on par with this if yeah. it's body count. Yeah. And it, 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 it that's ridiculous. exactly what it felt like. The body yeah, count it's, was a re- it's a ridiculous level. <clears throat> like, if you killed all these people, the army's sending another army for you. Like, somebody's gonna get you. Like, yeah. they're gonna send air. They're gonna shoot rockets at. They're gonna, something. Something's gonna happen. Like, they're not gonna let you kill this many people, and and you can walk off or whatever. Like, yeah. that's not gonna happen. Because at some point, it wasn't even about the virus or the vaccine. But the girl was yeah, the vaccine. It wasn't. It didn't even feel like that. You know, they were just like, okay, well, everything. you're here now, so you might as well come for the ride and we can rescue you once this is all said and done, you know. Mm-hmm. I will say this too, right? The movie actually, like, looked well. It was, like, shot well, you know? I, mean, I just say, te- that's right? a, from a technical standpoint, the movie looked good. Yeah, it looked good. I liked it. I like the how it was like cinematically filmed, whatever. But like, yep. you know, like if you made it more natural or more human, I think the movie would have been better served for it because it, yeah. it felt like a video game. It felt too much like a video game. It was a video and game. less like it a movie. Like a, it felt like a video <coughs> game all day, man. I was just like, okay, first person shooter. I'm like, okay, <laughs> video game. I was yeah. just waiting for the camera to bounce up and down like someone was holding the gun and running <laughs> like, okay, here we go with the Halo stuff, you know. This movie, yeah, man, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what to say about this movie. I am totally surprised that mm. IMDb gave it a 5.1. It I thought have it been lower. I thought it would have been like a 3.1, <laughs> you know, or a 2.1, right? But I think the problem is, is that there's really good things in this movie. Yeah. So, like, how it was shot was really good. Like, you know, camera angles, the way they did some stuff was really good. The fighting was excellent. It was a little too much fighting, but the fighting was still excellent. Uh, Actors were good. Story, not so much. Story, the story really hurt this movie the most out of everything. Yeah. Because if, you know, if you had a more cohesive story. Yeah, story. The the why him fighting 500 people would have been more believable. Mm -hmm. Because, like, he, he, he didn't really... Like you gave the reason for why he did it, right? But I mean, if he's able of doing this, why not just take your family out? Like I'll fight everybody and get down to DMZ. I'm done. I mean, this guy. <laughs> why I mean, would bother not, any of this stuff? He's not running out of bullets with a pistol, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, I'm like, dude. Okay, he has like a a limitless, you know, pistol. <laughs> but he was I was, also I was watching up pistols um, too. I was watching this John Woo movie the other day called The Killer. It's uh, it's the the movie they sampled it in Raekwon's uh, "Only Built for Cuban Links" album a bunch oh, of times, okay. but uh, yeah, so like that's a movie where the shotgun was just an automatic shotgun. He was just shooting all day with the shotgun. He never ran out of bullets in his in his handgun. Like he never even changed. <laughs> I don't even think he changed the magazine. He was just blasting a hundred <laughs> bullets out of his handgun. Wow. I don't know where these bullets were coming from. Like he's, it was, it was over the top, but but cool. It was stylized because one of the first movies that were doing that kind of stuff, and it's like in the I think it's the eighties or nineties, maybe it's the eighties. 
Mm -hmm. And, you know, like it it was one of the first movies like that in that style. And so, like, it was fine (laughs) for all the uh, shenanigans from, like, you know, holding guns. And so it was fine. But, you know, like looking at today, you're like, oh, you can't do that. You know, you got to reload your mag. You got to run out of bullets eventually. You got to actually do this or whatever. It's got to be real, you know? Yeah. People expect realism out of movies today. And like this movie with Carter, it it was hurt because of that. We've seen movies like John Wick is a perfect example of, okay, we have been seeing action for two hours and that's fine. But the action as is as realistic as physically possible. John Wick gets hurt a lot. Mm-hmm. And a lot of stuff he probably should have died, but they're like, okay, it's movie magic. But like he has to have the right amount of bullets in his gun. He's checking his ammo correctly. Like he's doing the stuff like you if this was a real hitman. This is what it would be like. And it, would you see movies like that and then see a movie like this where he's got an unlimited mag and it's going on forever. It's like, ah, come on, man. It drives me crazy. You can't. We've, we've had too much good stuff. And then the other thing is like when he was stabbing people, man, he was stabbing them like 40 times. Yeah, he's like. Yeah, I'm just like in the neck. I'm just like, this is again. OK, story is no cohesion, right? Yes. And I'm not quite sure who this movie was for. Who do you think would enjoy a movie like this? I mean, who is this movie for? Like, you know, just teenagers or like, you know. No, like this This is the thing, though. This is what bothers me. This movie was made for me. I love all the <laughs> stuff on the screen. <laughs> but it was like it's too much of the stuff on it's the too screen. Much. Yeah, exactly. I, these, are, these, these are the type of movies I would just watch just to watch them. I don't even need to review it. I would just watch it. And I think a, that if you... If this movie was an hour and a half, I bet you the IMDb rating would have been like maybe a 7.1. It was just too long. It was too long. We, we just watched The Great Man. Was it last week? Yeah. And this movie's the same thing. It's the yeah. exact same thing, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But more, yeah. more realistic. Yeah, that's true. You but, know, it's just like, it depends on like, you know, and again, like I said, um, you know, these movies coming out of like South Korea and Japan, you know, when, mm-hmm. they, when they're dealing with like, police storylines or like spy storylines dude it's a lot of killing it's a lot of yeah, yeah of course movies, absolutely you know? but this is bunkers and the killers i've <laughs> noticed that a lot of them are about an hour and 30 minutes maybe an hour and 45 minutes i think that's still mm-hmm. too long of just like killing for two hours right i think yeah, you gotta this, you gotta pause for a second and be like okay yeah. we're gonna chill out we're <laughs> yeah i think down. this movie would have been like right in the pocket at an hour and a half dude for real because mm-hmm. It didn't. The movie really didn't make any sense, you know. No, it made um, no. It made zero sense. It, it, made it really zero did. Sense, you know. I mean, when I, you I have know. every country is the bad guy and everybody's out to get you, yeah. but also the good guys in your ear, but he also is a bad guy in your ear. I'm mm-hmm. like, come on, man! Like, you got to pick something. You, if you had made the CIA the bad guys and they're trying to stop North and South Korea from getting together, I'd be like, all right, cool, all right, let's go. <laughs> but it's like everybody's the bad guy. Who's your who are you fighting for? Why are you listening to these people if they're all out, out to get you? Like he heard the the thing in her ear when he was on the bus talking to the American lady. And he heard that, oh, we're gonna kill kill him. It was like, why are you still listening to these people? <laughs> I'd be like, yo, get this thing out of my ear. I don't want to hear you anymore. <laughs> and the enemy just kept showing up and up, and they kept showing up. And it was just like, how are these guys getting this intel every time he kills yes. like 40 people? Then like another eighteen hundred people thing. on like, motorcycles. This what's going on? There should have been like you know like a, at the general in the headquarters. They're like we got cameras on the streets. We yeah, we're following the CCP cameras, whatever. And they're yeah. like we're like oh okay, he's on this street here. All right, send 20, 20 more bad guys down here. Let's go. Like you should have. Yeah. You needed that little bit of storytelling element to kind of make this thing make sense because yeah. there's no reason for them to even know where he was at all. Yeah. Once the thing no, started, it should have been like he, he could have slipped away and went to the like hung out in some alley somewhere and he should have got lost everybody. Right. I think um if this is the type of movie it was, right? They should have just like mm-hmm. set up the storyline up front, right? This is the mission. And mm-hmm. then start the bang bang, be very mm-hmm. clear with the mission, then start the bang bang from start to end. It was just again. It was it was confusing. Yeah, you know, yeah. It was, it was the, confusing. the amnesia thing. You didn't really get into why he had to do it at first. Like right. you kind of said, 
the general made him get amnesia so that he can go kick them. Well, why would he need to do that? It wouldn't have been better if he had his memories. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's like there's elements that were good and bad at the same time, and he never yeah. used any of them correctly, in my yeah, opinion. This and the thing is, a... is though, I like <laughs> I like so many elements of this movie, but like yeah. that, like the amnesia thing bothers me. The family thing bothers me. Mm-hmm. Like the the uh the being double crossed by the CIA thing. You never utilize any of these storylines. They they don't come to a conclusion. They don't you know you don't really get the benefit from good storytelling from why you did these things. The motivation is not there. Who put it's the bomb like, in his mouth? On you know the two. Yeah, person. like who? who why who put would that you? In his mouth? Uh, exactly. That's the thing. Like mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. you should have been used that to your benefit or something. Like you should like. Uh, Bothers me, man. The person I like this was, movie and I hated it. The person who was talking to him, um, you know, all the time, you know, in his ear, like it would have been mm-hmm. really interesting to find out, like, what that headquarter looked like. The headquarters for whoever was controlling that voice, because obviously yeah. there's a it's a supercomputer somewhere. Was it, was it the Where girl was in the it? van? What I I don't understand. Like, I thought it was the girl in the van that was doing the talking. Was it no? Else? She was talking. The girl in the van was talking to him while the female in the ear was talking to him. You know, like bro, like it was two. <laughs> he had two. He had two women talking to him and whatnot. You know, I was. Just I like, would. This confusing. is what I would like to do. Mm-hmm. I would like to go to South Korea, go <laughs> meet with the guys that made this movie, and be like, mm-hmm. "Hey, I'm gonna help you cut this thing down and make a better movie. I got yeah. you. Like, <laughs> we're gonna trim down a couple storylines." We're gonna turn this to some dialogue around. We do some voiceovers, boom, story done, and we're gonna you know, shelve the people you're killing in half. We don't need to kill yeah, everybody. You don't need to Just do that. kill some people, not everybody. I think I think that <laughs> if you shaved forty minutes off the the movie, made it like an mm-hmm. hour and a half, and kept it the way it was, it would have been a a, a lot better movie. Yeah, but but like, obviously, you, have to, you definitely have to trim some stuff. Yeah, and it would have made sense. But, but like you're, you're because right. you need, different storylines. They need help with the storytelling, you know, yes. cutting things out. They need a lot of help. They need they just trip just just a couple sections, a couple storylines. Just trim it down. General kidnap my daughter. She's in a where she's in this facility in North Korea. <laughs> I gotta kill all these people to get to her. Done. That's it. Okay. That's all you need. You know. you know more motivation. That's it. And then you got the girl at the end. And she maybe double crossed you, but like, you know, maybe she's gonna help you. We don't know because she kind of loves you. Done. That's it. Mm-hmm. Done. Story's the, done. Magnificent story right there. Yeah. The thing about like hardcore American military movies, um, it's like mm-hmm. they have a mission and that's it. Like if you look at yeah, all of the Rambo movies, mission. he has a he has a mission. That is it. Mm-hmm. He yeah. is he is like a killing machine until the mission is completed. But we know what the mission yes. was, right? Yes. And he gets hurt and he goes through some stuff. He's got to yeah. figure out a way to get around whatever situation is. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Done and done. That's it. Yeah. That's all you need. You don't need more than that. I don't know about this movie, man. Um, <laughs> I so wanted to like this movie so I bad because like I love this. everything in it. We're going to wrap this up, man. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. Netflix, the original Netflix film, Carter. What are you rating mm. this film? Five. Five out of ten. <laughs> so straight five. <laughs> and you know, you're right. You trim, this is, you trim 40 <laughs> you minutes said, out of this. And I thought give you were going to say like lines. a six or a seven. <laughs> no, no, five. This gets five. a five. <clears throat> so you, you trim some storylines, get rid of some excess fighting and stuff like that, tone it down, and make the pace a little better. Easily a seven. Easily. Yeah. 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 You know what? I'm also going to give it a, I'm going to give it a five too. Mm. The thing about it is this, right? I didn't have a problem with the movie itself, even though the storyline was just like ridiculous, right? Yeah. No, I didn't have a problem with this movie at at all. I thought it was fine. Right. You know, but um, I think that again, if it were hour and 30 minutes and Mm. some cohesion to the storyline, easily a seven or an eight because i love yeah. movies you know we love movies that start off bang bang and bang bang yeah just you know? go just boom just, just get go. into if it's that type of movie get into it mm-hmm. right and don't yeah. stop until the movie is and the mission is over it's completed yeah you know? so yeah this got a five would you recommend this like if someone said hey you know you have any good movies to watch would you recommend this to anyone <laughs> probably not <laughs> i i was just talking yesterday i was talking to somebody about this 
Mm-hmm. And and they were like, yeah, I saw I saw a, a, a ad about it, you know, like a re, a preview. Mm-hmm. And he's like, it, it looks interesting. And I, I was like halfway through the movie, and I was like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> and I was like, it's excessive. Like, it's too much. And that was before the movie finished. And I was like, it's excessive. Like, yeah. I, I don't know if that's your cup of tea. And he was like, yeah, I'm gonna check it out anyway. I was like, all right, cool, but you know, it's excessive. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and that's he, the that's the best way to describe it. There's and, no other and way. O- and one other thing is like, um, I, you're right. I think in South Korea, you can do a lot of stuff like that. You know, I mean, in terms of mm-hmm. money and budget and everything. All those fight yeah. scenes today in America, like Hollywood, you, that that would be crazy expensive. The train scene, the helicopter, yeah. you know, come on. Well, like you don't have unlimited henchmen in America. Like you, have, right. you have thirty people and they're in the union, and you're like, yo, you got to get this done in two hours, otherwise yeah. we're gonna walk and we're gonna shoot again next week. That's all you got. Like, <laughs> so they don't do, they can't do this stuff. Yeah, yeah, unlimited henchmen, all different people, it's unlimited. <laughs> This movie was insane, man. (laughs) Well, there you have it. Another episode of the Behind the Groove podcast. I am Basil Barrington. I am DJ Keo. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And until next time, peace. All right.